test, test, good. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for your patience. I know we're a little behind, um, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Welcome to day three. We've got a good talk by Adam Whitaker coming up here on forecasting and using Hex DBT and high touch. Um, so why don't we give it up for him um, as he comes forth? Thanks for coming out. Today we're going to be talking about data automation with dollars on the line, forecasting seven-figure deals with Hex DBT and high touch. So first, who is Bluecore? Uh, Bluecore is the leading multi-channel personalization platform for the world's top retailers, uh, helping them grow and retain their best customers. Uh, I would bet that almost every single person in this room or probably this conference has received an email from Bluecore today, and you guys didn't even know it. So who are we as a data team at Bluecore? Uh, we were built last year to help us scale data warehousing, reporting, and data best practices. Um, we are not data science. We have a whole team to do that. We are built for uh, unlocking operational insights within our business. How do we take the data that Bluecore has, make it usable to our teams in the go-to-market space, sales and CS? We have some team principles that we like to follow. The TLDR here is that uh, we value outcomes over actions. So unlocking insights for the business is our main goal. Uh, the stack slide here should look pretty familiar to most of the people uh, in this room. And one of the things I do want to call on is that we, uh, we invested in Looker first as part of our stack. We found that all of our business logic landed in there. It was not accessible to other teams outside of, of people consuming Looker. Uh, any incremental questions that we needed to answer required new model development, and it was just not a scalable way to move forward, uh, which is why we have now uh, this entire stack to help us out. So why are we here? Your CCO slacks you at 9 p.m., says uh, a multi-million dollar account is underperforming, turn goals on the line. Who, what does underperforming mean? Who decided that it's underperforming? And why are we only hearing about it now? Uh, and by the way, it's, we need this by tomorrow morning. So at this point, what do you do? Sound the fire alarm, clear schedule, make a pot of coffee. Uh, it is time to hunker down now. Um, I'm sure people have been in this situation before. And uh, the business feels that this data just exists. We sold somebody a deal, we should know what we sold them. And how do we compare against that? Uh, but I think we all know that it's not as easy as that. So a little bit of context setting. So, so Bluecore, uh, we price our business on email clicks. SMS clicks, uh, engagement with content. Uh, we don't base it off of sends. In order to tell somebody how much they should be paying, uh, we need to tell them how many clicks they should be, you know, expect to use. Uh, so previously, our sales and CS teams would have to go out there. They would use some best practices, some benchmarks that they had access to. Maybe they were updated, maybe they weren't. Uh, and then they would also layer in the client strategy and any past results in order to come up with a projection. Uh, this is basically setting the expectations for the client on the performance that we would expect them to see out of our platform. Uh, any under or over projection has bad implications in both directions. If we don't do a good job of projecting, if we under project, that means that the client has to go back, procure more budget, and then we look a little silly because we don't know exactly how our business can perform. And if we over project, that means that they've overspent, they're very unhappy, they're likely going to downsell or churn at that point in time. Uh, either way, an inaccurate projection sets up our uh, CS team for a less than ideal relationship. So how did this look before we implemented this solution? Uh, one, track down the person who created that projection, hope they still exist at Bluecore, and then hope that they can find the sheet that they used. Maybe it was an Excel file, maybe it's a Google sheet, who knows what's even in there. Hope that you could take that whatever data they had and recreate what they told the customer at that point in time. Also kind of a long shot at this point. And then take what they've built and try to tie that into actual performance. Most times they have a number, it's a million, a million clicks. How did we get there? We have no idea. If performance is not what we're expecting to see, how do we unpack that any further? And then lastly, you know, about a week later after you've gotten all this information and uh, compiled it, sent it back to the CCO, but it's all way too late at that point in time. 
moving forward, what do we want to build here? Uh, so we, have a, we would like to produce a click projection that is flexible, meaning it's, it's tailored to our customer's strategies. Our customers are all unique, they've got different goals, we need to be able to match those goals. And we also need to be able to communicate with them uh, what we're building, iterate on it to make sure that they're getting what they want to see. Uh, we need this projection to be reliable, uh, meaning it's accurate, it's standardized, it's guardrail. We're not going to sell them something that is totally unachievable or way outside of their bounds. Uh, and it's auditable. We need to know what went into it in order to get, uh, to get out what we need. And then lastly, it needs to be retained so we can compare it to actual performance, and it needs to be integrated into our existing reporting. Sounds pretty ideal. So what are the problems that we faced as we went through this whole thing? So our ability to accurately project is tied to adoption and performance here. So in order for us to create a successful solution, we need something that's adaptable to each client's strategy. Uh, we need it to be based off reliable performance benchmarks, and we need to adjust it for seasonality. I think this is one of the biggest challenges that we had was the seasonality aspect. Our clients are not uh, on the same peaks. Uh, some of them have their peaks in the holiday season, some in the spring, summer. For us to be able to tell somebody that they are over-consuming what we expect them to, uh, we need to know when their high, you know, their high seasons are and when their low seasons are, or else we're going to be raising alarms that are unnecessary, further eroding that, that client trust. And then two, there are a number of solutions out there that can help us, but each one of them only solves a piece of the puzzle here. Uh, so we need something that, that scales super well. Uh, it has the input flexibility of Excel. Everybody can use Excel, and then everybody can change all the inputs that they need to, uh, but that's not available in other tools. Uh, we've got Jupyter Notebooks that you can do a ton of transformations in, super flexible, but not accessible to end users. Uh, and the real-time collaboration of Sheets is fantastic, but uh, not all tools have that access. And then just the, the polish of a client-facing UI. We could put this in front of somebody, and they would look at it and not think that somebody built it uh, you know, overnight on a desktop or whatever it is. The polish that you can put on top of it is, is important. And then we also need to make sure that this is actionable. So we give somebody a projection, we can audit it, uh, we can tell them where their performance is deviating from what we expect. So we need to be able to retain the inputs so we know what went into this projection, also retaining the outputs so we can go back and, and audit what happened. Uh, we need to be able to integrate this into other systems as well. If it just exists in one place and it's not accessible to our sales reps and CS teams, then we haven't done a good job. We need to be able to proactively engage our customers when performance is deviating from what we expect to see. And then the last problem. Uh, we could probably build this entire thing if we wanted. Uh, we'd have to loop in a whole bunch of different teams, end jobs, front end devs, UX, data teams. We probably should set aside multiple quarters, probably even a year to build this thing. We probably wouldn't even be having this talk right now if that's the path we went down, spoiler. Uh, we actually decided to use tools that were off the shelf in order to get there in time. Uh, this also helps free up our engineering teams to work on other problems. Uh, we wanted a solution that was just easy to maintain, uh, it was easy to scale, uh, and it was just low impact to the rest of the org. So how did, how did we land on the solution that we did? We already had data in DBT. We were already doing a ton of modeling, so extending those models out was a, a logical next step there. Uh, we have a bunch of data that we transformed, including seasonality, we have our benchmarks, all of our historical performance. We take all of that, put that into hex. This is where our users then input the values that they are getting from their clients on what their growth rates expect to be, what are their strategies, how well do we expect them to adopt this program uh, over time, which then turns into outputs that are available in hex. Um, we can see how, much they, how many clicks they should be consuming over a period of time. We can see the incremental value of those clicks as well based off of the improvements that we're, uh, that we're recommending to our client strategies. And then we need to retain that whole thing. So using hex, we retain both the inputs and the outputs because the inputs matter a lot. We need to know how we got to that projection, uh, including who created it. Uh, going back to that original problem of going back to the person who built this thing, I don't even know half the time who built those old Google Sheets. Uh, so now we need to just know that, yes, it was built by Adam. And then lastly, take all that information and make it accessible in places that people consume that data. So we have Salesforce, we have Jira, we have NetSuite. Take this data, pipe it into all of those different solutions so that way everybody can consume it. 
So what, what does DBT, DBT do in this stack? So it, it was already powering our warehouse. We were doing a ton of transforms. To be able to take our models and extend them out a little bit further to include benchmarks was something that we could do very quickly and reliably. Uh, we were quite confident in our skills to be able to, to, to build quality transforms there. One of the other things that it's worth calling out is that DBT is pretty instrumental in our success moving forward. Uh, we're right now, uh, I, I would say, pushing the limits of what BigQuery and DBT can do. Uh, we've got around 10,000 models that we're refreshing every 30 minutes in order to power up the entire platform. So DBT is, is pretty embedded inside of what we're doing. And then what is, what is Hex's role in all of this? Uh, so we need something that's super flexible that, that our users can input their data into, uh, including seasonality. So uh, we have the ability to say, this is the, the months that we expect you to be consuming more and less. That's all uh, accessible to the users themselves. They can see the outputs of their choices right away. So we give them a historical trend. They change the seasonality. Does the curve that they see match what they see historically? It's a, it's a way for them to check their own work to make sure that they're creating uh, reasonable projections. And then just traditional BI tooling just can't match the level of control that we have over this. Uh, we, you know, like I said before, we used a ton of Looker. Uh, it has its place. It's just not something that we could use here to, to deliver this. And then the ability to write this data back. So let's just say we could do everything else, but we couldn't retain it. Kind of what's the point? We need to be able to write these things back. So that write back functionality was super important for us. Uh, we have a bunch of other Hex use cases as well, which are fantastic. Uh, we are using uh, Hex to be able to ingest all the artifacts coming out of the DBT cloud uh, metadata API, which is great. Uh, we're using it for internal platform performance alerting. So that way, when uh, performance does change, not even at the scale we're talking here, this is like intraday performance. We expect to see something happen when we send emails out. It's not happening. We need to make our teams aware that something has changed. Uh, we're using Hex to be able to run that on a schedule and sync up with, with Slack and Jira to create tickets and alerts for people to respond to. And then we're no longer creating ad hoc queries that we're sharing around in Google Sheets uh, or um, in Jupyter Notebooks that are just not accessible to other folks. So now our workflow is we get tickets in that we need to respond to, uh, create them in Hex. They're shareable, collaborative. Everybody can see what's going on. And then we can also share this information with clients directly, uh, something that we could, you know, you can do that with Google Sheets, uh, but it doesn't have the same polish that it does when you're sharing a, a nice, nice UI. And then lastly, high touch. So we need to be able to take all of this information and sync it into the sources that people use the most. So taking data from uh, our activity data for the, the billing part of it, pipe that into NetSuite uh, for our finance team. Take the projections, uh, pump them into Salesforce so sales reps can access them. And then take our account data that we've already transformed and put that into Jira so our product support team can use it. And well, like how, how did it work? So we had some, some expected and unexpected outcomes. Some of the expected ones here, our users are focusing more on the contents and the customer impact, not on actually building the projections themselves. Uh, significantly reduce the amount of time it's needed to create a new projection. And we're now increasing trust with our customers because we're able to build projections that are reasonable and achievable uh, as opposed to what we were able to do in the past. Some unexpected ones that are also quite positive here for us. Uh, we built this to, to support the sales and renewal cycle. We did not expect our client success managers to use this as a simulation tool to understand what our clients are and are not doing and what the biggest opportunities to drive their business. And then our CCO, the who, who started this entire problem all the way up front, uh, in his first week, he's demoing this app live to our board, showing the trust that he has in what we're able to do on behalf of our clients. And could we have built this thing entirely from scratch? Probably. Uh, but we would not be talking about it right now. It would likely be some time next year. Uh, it took us about three months to build, test, and roll out this entire solution from top to bottom. I feel pretty, pretty happy with that result. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're able to capture the inputs from both our customers and our sales reps, create and store projections, compare the projection against actual performance, to proactively manage our clients' health, uh, all without our data teams having to do anything now. We all front-loaded that work. If you're interested in a blue core and what we do to help grow and retain uh, retailers' best customers, hit us up on Slack. Visit bluecore.com. Let me know if you have any questions.
Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, thanks again to, to Adam and the Blue Core team. Um, it's always good to see how DBT just is able to be a part of so many things. Um, I know we've got another session coming up after this, but before that, um, any questions for Adam? Got one over here. Yeah, um, let's do that. Um, we're going to do a repeat of questions just so online could hear. Um, do you mind? Yeah, we can do that too. So we're just going to do that. We're going to throw them in the Slack channel and go from there. So with that, everybody give it back up for, for Adam. Uh, we appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next uh, workshop. Thanks, y'all.